Ciao ragazzi! This is Talk Culture TV on YouTube. Buonasera tutti! Welcome to this episode of Talk Culture TV. The road to Kiev for the Champions League final is drawing ever closer. And tomorrow night we have the first semi-final at Anfield between Liverpool, the five-time winners, against Roma with Rajon Angle and the Ninja and co. So far this season in the competition, Liverpool have come through unscathed, untouched, unbeaten. Roma have twice had to overturn deficits from the first leg in the knockout stages, first Shaq to Donetsk, before the miracle of all comebacks, having overturned a 4-1 deficit against Barcelona from the new Camp to defeat them 3-0 at the Stadio Olimpico. No one expected them to be at this stage in the competition, that is for certain. In this episode, we're going to give you a bit of a brief history on Liverpool FC, their meetings with Roma, and of course, a man that used to wear the Jala Rossi colours, now a red man, that is Mohamed Salah. So, what do we know about Roma's opponents tomorrow night? That is Liverpool FC. Founded in 1892, nicknamed the Red Men, Liverpool are England's second most successful club. They are just one trophy behind their biggest arch rivals, that is Manchester United. Despite the fact Liverpool have never won the Premier League that was established in 1992, they have been champions of England 18 times, just two behind their arch rivals Manchester United. They have won the FA Cup seven times, the League Cup eight times, three UEFA Cups, but if there's one competition they can never keep their hands off, it is the European Cup. They have won it five times. Of those five times that Liverpool have been champions of Europe, the first came in Rome in 1977 at the Stadio Olimpico under the management of the late great Bob Paisley. Now, he won this competition three times for the Red Men. Joe Fagan would win a fourth in 1984 against Roma on their own ground, yet again at the Stadio Olimpico, before Rafael Benitez would win in 2005 after a miracle comeback in Istanbul, having been 3-0 down against AC Milan. They come back to win on penalties. You'll never forget the antics of Jerzy Dudek, of course. Of those five European Cup victories, in all the finals, Liverpool have defeated the opposition wearing plain white. And that leads us on to the 1984 final, where they first faced Roma and the head-to-head -head between the two sides. When we look at the head-to-head -head between Liverpool and Roma, it is in favour of the English side. There have been five meetings, Liverpool winning three, Roma just one victory, and there's been one draw. The first meeting between the two sides came in the 1984 European Cup final and is possibly the most famous meeting between the two ever. Roma had won the Scudetto in 1983 and the following year they made the European Cup final on their own pitch at the Stadio Olimpico. Standing in their way was of course Joe Fagan's Liverpool. Now in the 70s and 80s Liverpool dominated. They were the best team in Europe hands down. Now, the game itself would end in a 1-1 draw. Phil Neal had given Liverpool the lead before Roberto Pruzzo equalised for the Giallo Rossi. The game went to penalties. You'll never forget, of course, to this day you always see it. Bruce Grobler's infamous wobbly legs, even spaghetti legs. Key men for Roma missed in the shootout. Roberto Pruzzo, Bruno Conti amongst them. Alan Kennedy would score the winning penalty for Liverpool and Joe Fagan's side would have their fourth ever European Cup win. After that famous 1984 European Cup final, the two sides would not meet until the 2001 UEFA Cup. Now, the first leg at the Stadio Olimpico, where Liverpool had won the European Cup twice on previous occasions, proved a lucky omen yet again. They would win 2-0, thanks to two goals from Michael Owen. In the return leg at Anfield, Roma would win 1-0 after Uruguayan midfielder Gianni Grigu strike. However, Roma would go out on aggregate. Liverpool would go on to win the UEFA Cup, as well as the League Cup and the FA Cup that year, a treble for them. Roma would, however, go on to win their third ever Scudetto in their history under the stewardship of Fabio Capello. The two sides would meet yet again in the 2002 secondary group stage of the Champions League. Now, the format of the competition was a bit different then. You had your first group stage, then a secondary one. Uh, this was the group of death, you could say. It had Liverpool, Roma, Galatasaray and Barcelona... The first meeting between the two at the Stadio Olimpico would end 0-0, a frustrating night for the Jalaros. I never forget watching this game. Candela, Tomasi, Totti missing numerous chances for the Jalaros. 
When they played at Anfield, of course, Liverpool would win 2-0, thanks to goals from Finnish striker Yari Lippmann from the spot and an Emil Heskey header would send Liverpool through to the knockout stages and dump Roma out of the competition. There have been no meetings between the sides since, but 16 years on, here we are in the semi-final of the Champions League. So after the history there on the two clubs, on to tomorrow night's game. And how can we not mention Mohamed Salah, the Egyptian international? Of course, was at Roma last season, signed for Liverpool for £42 million in the summer. Now, you have to say with hindsight, it was an absolute bargain. Now, when you consider what Paris Saint-Germain have spent on Neymar, what Manchester United have spent on Alexis Sanchez and Paul Pogba within the last two seasons, £42 million was cheap. And look at the impact it's had. You know, he has scored 41 goals in all competitions this year, 31 in the Premier League. He's not even an out-and-out -out striker. You know, when he was at Roma last year, he did score 19 goals, but he was playing behind Edin Dzeko. You know, he was feeding the Bosnian international. And, of course, Dzeko won the golden boot in Serie A last season. I mean, watched Roma this year. Dzeko has kind of been a one-man band at times. You know, Patrick Schick isn't Mohamed Salah, let's be honest. No disrespect. You know, Salah, the impact he's had, I don't think anyone could have ever anticipated it. You know, in the summer, there weren't many clubs knocking down the door to sign him either. You know, Liverpool slipped under the radar. I think they were the only club that made an offer and they got their man. Now, Salah wanted to return to the Premiership. He felt he had a point to prove. Now, when he was at Chelsea, he wasn't given a fair chance, let's be honest. He had to go to Italy, loan spell with Fiorentina before Roma signed him permanently to kind of kickstart his career. And it definitely worked, that is for certain. You know, I've got to say, having watched Liverpool in previous seasons, after Luis Suarez was sold, you know, something was missing from the team. It kind of lost its identity. Gerard then, of course, went to play in America. Raheem Sterling was stole to Manchester City. You know, Brendan Rodgers spent big money on the likes of Mario Balotelli and then Christian Benteke. It didn't really fill the void. Uh, he lost his job. Jurgen Klopp then, of course, came in. He made a UEFA Cup final in his first half season. But, you know, goals, I think, have been a problem for Liverpool in previous seasons. But, you know, I, all this about Philip Coutinho, you look what they sold him to Barcelona for. I don't think Liverpool miss him. Liverpool play a lot more better football, fluent football, when you've got Salah uh, along with Firmino and Mane. That attacking trio, you know, they don't miss the likes of Sturridge or Coutinho. They're a lot better off without them. Now, if Liverpool had probably picked up their form a bit more and maybe not lost a few games, they could have possibly challenged for the Premier League title below the two Manchester clubs, of course, in the Premier League race. But when it comes to Europe this season, they have been a force. And Salah has scored. He's been prolific in that competition as well. Now, there has been talk that Real Madrid are going to make an offer for Mohamed Salah this summer. He is off to the World Cup with Egypt in Russia, unlike some, as we know. I'm sure Cristiano Ronaldo, though, may have something to say about that. We all know how he doesn't like to be outshone at the Santiago Bernabeu in Madrid. Uh, if there's any weakness in Liverpool's team, I'd say it's probably the goalies, whether it's Mignolet or Clarius. They do make some mistakes at times. But the German charismatic coach, that is Klopp, when I say about he's putting identity together, signed Virgil van Dijk from Southampton in the transfer window, and it has definitely shored up the defence, that is for certain. When we look at it in a Roma point of view, when we look at the sale of Salah, now, Salah, if he'd still been at Roma, he could have gone this summer for free. So they had to take the money, and they all, of course, sold Antonio Rudiger to Chelsea, uh, the money they spent on players, Patrick Schick, he did score his first Serie A goal yesterday. He struggled. He's not Mohamed Salah, let's be honest. Uh, Roma, though, had to sell him. They had to comply with the financial fair play rules. New stadium that they're waiting for the green light. They really couldn't have done any more to keep Salah in defence to Pilotto. I'm sure many Roma fans will disagree with me there. That is for certain. Now at the weekend, Liverpool drew 2 all with bottom side West Brom, having been 2-0 up and surrendered a two-goal lead. But I don't read too much into that. They'd have had one eye on the Champions League tie against Roma. Roger Langeland, the ninja, and Roma beat Spal 3-0 away. Patrick Schick finally scoring his first ever Serie A goal. Now this season, uh, ahead of tomorrow night's game, I've got to say, Roma have been Jekyll and Hyde. You know, which Roma's going to turn up? Will it be the one that come unstuck against the Suola and Fiorentina at home? Or the one that went to Napoli, ended their 10-match and beaten run and then overturned Barcelona's 4-1 lead. You just never know what you're going to get. You know, when Roma lose, they say the coach is Savio Di Francesco is inexperienced. He has no clue. When they win, they say, well, he's an ex-player. He experiences more than Luciano Spalletti, the previous coach. Uh, my predictions for this game, I have to say Liverpool are favourites. I expect the Red Men to win at Anfield. That is for certain. 
Uh, what Rajanangal and the Ninja and his Roma colleagues must do is they must stay in the tie. If they lose 2-3, 4-0... Forget it. They're not going to come back like they did against Barcelona. You know, Liverpool defend a lot better than the Belgrana. That is for certain. One thing I will say uh, in favour of Roma is the likes of Manolas, Fazio and even Alisson, even the rest of the team, they will know more about Mohamed Salah than any other opposition that he's come up against this season. Whether they can stop him, that remains to be seen. But, you know, Roma just must stay in this tie. That is for certain. You know, look at Manchester City. They've won the Premier League in style this season. They went to Anfield, beaten 3-0 in the first leg, and they never recovered. Now, Roma, of course, in Serie A this season, they haven't threatened for the Scudetto. They're fighting for third place along with Lazio and Inter. Juventus and Napoli have been a par above the rest of the league. In the Coppa Italia, they went out disappointingly to Torino. This is a real chance for Roma to win something. Uh, no one ever expected them to have got to this stage. Everyone was putting all their money on Juventus getting to the semi-final. But it's Roma, that, you know, they're the underdog. They're probably, on paper, the weakest side left in the competition. You could say pressure's off them. Can they use that to their advantage? Who knows? One thing is for certain, I can't wait for the game tomorrow night. And tell us what you think is going to happen. Like, comment below. Don't forget to subscribe to Talk Culture TV. Also, hop over to our Facebook page and give us a like. We will have our reaction after tomorrow night's game is finished at Anfield. That is for certain. Arrivederci. Ciao.